to 14, 17 through 19. <clears throat> if you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed. For the spirit of glory and God rest on you. For it is time for judgment to bring, <clears throat> begin with God's household, and if it begins with us, what will the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if it is hard for the righteous to be saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? So then, those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to their faithful Creator and continue to do so. So be it. Can you hear me okay? Am I on? Okay. I turn my, mine on, see? Start with prayer. Father in heaven, we do thank you and praise you for you are awesome, mighty, beyond anything that we can say or even conceive. You are so good, so wonderful, so merciful, so great, great and mighty, Lord, that you would create us, that you would put up with our stiff neck disobedience, Lord, and our sin and that it would cost you your son to save us. It's a free gift of salvation for belief in Jesus Christ. How simple it can be. But yet we still wander away, Lord. We still disobey. We are a stiff-necked people. Lord, fill us with your spirit. Teach us the ways of Jesus, Lord. Help us to desire you more than anything in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, John, your time was perfect because you didn't know this was going to be titled, which Kim doesn't have it up there, blessed with a question mark. And the kids talked a little bit about that too, and they sang the song about this little light of mine, which happens to be closing scripture. They didn't know that either. And one thing that blessed means is happy. So we get to thinking about being blessed and that we're happy. But see, happy is a feeling again, kind of like love. Love is I choose to love. If I only love because of the happy feeling that I get, then that's not love at all. Love keeps no records of wrongs. Love thinks of others more than themselves. Blessed is a condition that you have because God has approved you because of your faith in Jesus Christ. And yes, as you fill yourself with Jesus, with the knowledge of Jesus, with the grace of God, you will feel more and more blessed as far as being happy, content, have peace that surpasses all understanding, be fine in any condition that you're in, especially as you live for and long for the coming of Jesus Christ. And especially as you realize that the kingdom is here now, that you are privileged to be a part of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven here on earth. So are you living like it? Are you blessed? Did you read your readings this week? Yeah, I'm going to keep on all year long, don't worry. Because I'm going to spur you, and sometimes spurring doesn't feel that great. Other times, you know, it gets to react. Sometimes you have to spur a little harder. Did you read the Psalms this week? The Psalms this week led up, they give us a lesson from history about Israel's indifference, even though they saw God's mighty wonders and how they continued to disobey Him. And today's was when God heard them, He was furious. He rejected Israel completely. Wow, you are blessed. God did not reject you. He called you and you answered by faith. You are His child. Do you realize that? Are you going to live for the kingdom? Will you come out from the ways of the world? All the letters that we read by James and by Peter and by the author of Hebrews and by Paul, they all said the same things. To come out of this world and the church in that day was being persecuted for their faith. Be thankful that you're not being that persecuted like that for your faith. So even more reason for you to love God and love others and to live a life of faith. He abandoned the tabernacle of Shiloh. You are the tabernacle. God dwells in you. <clears throat> he, 
He sent the ark, his mighty, the ark of his might into captivity. That's the power of God. The power of God lives inside of you because the Holy Spirit lives in you. You are blessed. Do you understand this? Are you reading this? I'll give you guys a copy. Don't, don't let me forget. There's yours. Anybody else that needs a copy, I'll give you a copy. It takes a few minutes in the morning, or whenever you want to do it, but it's great to do it in the morning, to read through the Psalms, to pray through the Psalms, to ask God for guidance each day. Oh, and if you're reading, you're reading, and guess what? <laughs> I count these. I know how many are out and how many are left. And yeah, I spur you along each day. And, you know, halfway into the year, oh, come on, we should all be reading along. And yes, this week I got a little slack because I got four kids again and other things going on. And it's just hard to find the five minutes that it takes. But you find it. If His Word is sweeter than honey, you find it. Did you find five minutes to eat? Well, yeah, you did. Oh, I know, but you're eating some other scripture or some other reading plan that you're reading, right? You got five other minutes too. Oh, you don't? Did you go eat a snack this week besides your normal meals? Did you sit down and have a cup of coffee? Did you take five minutes to do a puzzle or watch TV? You can find the time. I read through last night, and I didn't at first, and then I felt like a hypocrite because I'm like, I have read and studied Acts plenty this year, so I'm not going to read it this time. And I said, what a hypocrite. So I sat down after everybody else went to bed when I was ready to go to sleep, and it took me 22 minutes to read those chapters. 25 minutes is what's set aside. Five minutes a day, five days a week. What's your excuse? Okay, are we good there? So blessed, what does that mean? Peter's letters to the churches were written from Rome. He saw the way the world lived, and he wrote letters to the churches that were scattered abroad, that were living as exiles, how to live. Because the Holy Spirit had revealed to him that there was going to be a fiery ordeal coming. The Holy Spirit also revealed to Peter that he was soon going to die. Peter, the apostle who walked on water that was there with Jesus, and the, the apostles are being knocked off. Who knows if Peter died first or Paul died first, but they both were martyred, not just died, around the same time. These leaders of the churches are going to be going away. New leaders are going to have to step up. You're going to have to write the words of God's laws on your heart, and guess what? The Holy Spirit does that for you if you just yield to Him so that you can teach your children and they teach their children and they teach their children. What a wonderful sight it was to see these children up here. Do they see Jesus Christ in you? So Peter writes this second letter warning that there are false doctrines out there in the church. And some of them even say, oh, don't worry, you got all the time in the world, or, or even you missed it, the Lord already came. But Peter says, be assured of this, the day of the Lord will come. Are you living as a good steward? Are you ready and doing what He has told you to do with the things that He has told you to do it with? Are you living for the kingdom today as if He were coming tomorrow? Are you? Would you live a little differently if you knew you didn't have tomorrow? You shouldn't. You should live the same today as if you didn't have a tomorrow. Especially when these beautiful children, the heritage of the Lord, the blessing from the Lord are here in your midst. As long as you have family members, friends, and even enemies that need to come to Jesus Christ. Peter's last words written to the church were this in 2 Peter 3, 17 and 18. Therefore, dear friends, since you have been forewarned, be on your guard so that you may not be carried away by the error of lawlessness and fall from your secure position. But grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Grace and knowledge that comes from God, not because of who you are or what you've done, but in spite of that, because you're wretched, naked, pitiful, and blind. You are a sinner. You deserve the wrath of God, but because Jesus Christ took that, all you've got to do is believe in Him. And if you believe Him, as James said, then you will show it by the way you live, by works of righteousness, by good deeds. And we've read Scripture that continues to talk about the good deeds. Let me remind you of Jesus' first words, because you read them when you, or last words before He entered heaven. 
because you read them last week when you read Acts chapter 1, if you read Acts chapter 1. It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by His own authority. That was said by Jesus because His disciples asked Him if this time was He going to restore the kingdom of Israel. It is about kingdoms and kings. And they saw physical and they wanted the kingdom of Israel restored and they thought surely Jesus was going to do that now. But Jesus said when He started His ministry to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Isn't that much better than the kingdom of Israel? Isn't that much better than the kingdom of Babylon or Rome or anything else in this world? Who are you living for? Are you living for some other kingdom or are you living for the kingdom of heaven? Then he went on to say, but the complete opposite of what this kingdom that you're thinking about building, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. You will be my witnesses because the power that you have as though God were making His reconciliation to man known through you. Is that the way you're living? And as you read through Acts, you saw how the church lived. You saw the example of Peter. And we ended off with our uh, reading this week when we saw Stephen being brought forth to the religious rulers. And you know what's going to happen next. He is going to be martyred killed for his witness, for his testimony. It wasn't one of the twelve, it wasn't Paul, it was a lay person who was first martyred for his faith because he was doing good deeds and preaching the gospel message. <clears throat> who are we? Who are you? Who are we in Christ? How are we to live? Who and what are we professing with our words and even more with our deeds? How can we live this way of Jesus? You don't. Quit trying. The Holy Spirit lives through you as you read and study God's Word, as you grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. To Him be all glory forever and ever. Amen. Peter's first words in Acts, you read them this week, to the churches, In the last day, God says, Acts chapter 2, verse 17, I will pour out my Spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. We heard about that when I read you about Lee's dreams about Romania and how Beth caught that vision also. Even on my servants... Both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and, the, and the, they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. Peter began his preaching with the day of the Lord coming. He ended his preaching with the day of the Lord coming. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That's why we're still here on earth proclaiming and living so that people can be saved. Nothing has changed here. The church lived like Christ in the early days despite persecution. They even grew in the face of persecution. How are we living today? It's still the last days. It's even closer to the very last day. Are we living like the church? Are we living like Peter said in those, those days? See, the difference in so many Christians today and the people there that we're reading about in Acts, the ones that truly believed, the ones that even sold their property because they considered it not their own, and then as a result, no one had need that was among them. They were cut to the heart, is what Scripture says in Acts chapter 2. Cut to the heart. They didn't just have it in their mind like the Pharisees, but they cut to their heart that they were a sinner, that their actions condemned them that they were following the ways of themselves and the ways of the kingdom of this world, and that they did not have a way to, to get themselves to heaven, to pay their sin debt. But Jesus came. How blessed they are. And all they needed to do was believe, and Jesus Himself through the Holy Spirit would transform them into His own image. Is that what's happening in your life? Peter's answer to them, they asked him what to do. Peter's answer was to repent. And then he went on to plead with them, and we don't have all that written in Scripture, but he continued with many words to plead with them, and he said, save yourself from this corrupt generation. Because if you don't come out of it, you might think you have the mindset that you're saved and everything else, but if you have that mindset, 
then it will affect, affect your heart and your life will surely show it. Your light will shine. The little kid sang about it. Is that what's happening in your life? Are you growing in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ? The church sure did in, in Acts. Let me remind you again, pa Peter's last words to the churches were, Therefore, dear friends, since you have been forewarned about these false gospels, about not living the way you're supposed to live, be on your guard. Be ready to fight against these things. Don't, don't be surprised about them, but be ready. That means I've got to study God's Word to be an approved workman who can rightly handle the Word of truth. So I know what's what a lie and what's the truth. And you've got God's Word and you've got it in different translations and you've got it in devotionals and everything else. But are you feeding on it? Because you can't grow without getting the nutrition from it. How are you going to grow in grace and knowledge unless you're feeding on Jesus Christ? I know it's hard to find an extra five minutes. Find it. It's not that hard. That's an excuse that we make. Jesus' first words then. Let's go to that. Oh, let me finish Peter's first. You do that so that you're not carried away by the error of lawlessness, the way the world lives, living for themselves, living for the king of this world, living for created things rather than the Creator. They call it idols, if you didn't know that. And fall from your secure position. And we could have a whole sermon there about that, but we don't want that to happen, do we? And here's the next thing, verse 18. But here's what you do instead. Grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. See, many Christians try to have a Savior without a Lord, too. And that doesn't work. To Jesus be glory both now and forever. Amen. So what were Jesus' first words? I went to the Gospel of Matthew and, and put them down here for you. Very first thing recorded in the Gospel of Matthew, and remember the Gospel of Matthew is probably written based off the Gospel of Mark, which is probably Peter's account to John Mark about what he saw in, when he walked with Jesus here. And Peter's going away, so we've got these biblical records so that we can continue to study, and the Holy Spirit lives inside of us to reveal all truth to us, Jesus said. And it's even better for him to go away that the Holy Spirit will come. The Comforter will come is the words that he used. So his very first words in Matthew 3.15 was, Let it be so now. It is proper for, uh, for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. To fulfill all righteousness. He is answering John the Baptist who says, I can't baptize you. And Jesus said, let it be so. I am submitting to you for a water baptism to represent that people should submit to me because I'm going to baptize them with the Holy Spirit and with fire, whatever that means. Immediately after that, and there's a voice, audible voice from heaven saying, This is my Son in whom I'm well pleased. We read in Matthew chapter 4 that Jesus is driven by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted. Peter talks about, Paul talks about, that you're living in a foreign land in a wilderness. It's nothing, you think it's a wonderful place and everything, but it's nothing compared to your heavenly home, your hope that you have. So live for your hope. Live as a foreigner in this world. And after 40 days of fasting... I'll be honest with you, I don't fast, I should, but I'll be honest with you, I don't. We should do anything and everything we can to draw closer to Jesus. Fasting is saying that we can do without something so we can concentrate on Jesus, but it's so hard to do without the things of this world. After 40 days of fasting, Jesus was hungry and the devil tempted him with what? Physical bread. What did Jesus say? He said, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. So how much time are you spending feeding yourself spiritually with the word of God? Like I said, a good comparison is write down how much time you physically eat. And Jesus just said here that you need to spend as much time, if not more, on spiritual food. Because you are being tempted. Peter said before he died, be careful, beware, be on your guard. You've been forewarned. Then the devil took him to the highest point on the temple and tempted Jesus by twisting Scripture, which is what these false prophets do. 
But Jesus replied, It is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. So you might be studying Scripture and stuff, but if you're, really, if you're not really studying, you're not really seeking God, it'll literally go in one ear and out the other, or you'll know the way that you should live, and you'll act like and feel like you're living it because you think of your high status. That's not got nothing to do with being blessed. And we're going to look at that in a second. Blessed is not who I am for what I've done, because, but what Jesus has done for me, what God has done for me, that He would call me His very own child that He would dwell with me, that He would forgive me of all my sin. Then the devil took Jesus to the highest point on the temple of the temple. <laughs> we are God's temple, right? And He showed Him all the things of this world and said that those things would be His, be Jesus' if He just simply bow down and worship Him. Because, see, we do bow down and worship one thing or the other. But Jesus said, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve Him only. Remember what Jesus said when He was tempted by a religious leader? What's the greatest commandment? Jesus said to love the Lord your God with everything and love your neighbor. Show it in the life that you have to live. Notice that pattern because that's exactly how the devil's going to attack you. He's going to attack you with the physical things so that you are grounded in this world and you're afraid to let go of them and trust God. He's going to attack you by saying all these things you can have, these things are become your idols. And what's it going to do? It's going to cause you to bow down and worship Him instead of bow down and worship God, the Creator of all things, and the Redeemer of you by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. If you believe in Jesus, if you put your faith and trust in Him, you are blessed and nothing can remove that blessing from you. Jesus' next words. He goes out into public ministry and He says, Repent, verse 17, for the kingdom of heaven is come near. Not the kingdom of Israel, not the kingdom of this world, but the kingdom of heaven has come to you here on earth. If you believe, you're a kingdom citizen. You've been blessed. You've been born again. You are God's child. You've been adopted, sealed by the Holy Spirit. Are you living for the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, or are you continuing to live for the world? Repent, as Peter's first word said, and save yourself from this corrupt generation. Repent is a change of mind, a change of way of thinking, because it penetrates you. It penetrates your heart and soul where you don't live that any way, way anymore because you realize how blessed you truly are. And you can't help but to live for the one who loved and lived for you. Jesus became flesh and dwelt among us. The words of life, God Himself dwelled with us to show us the way and to die for us, to save us from our sins. We are saved totally by grace, but if we're saved by grace, then we, as Ephesians said, then we were, as we were designed from the beginning of creation, God is creating a masterpiece in, in us to do good works. Jesus' next words, two verses later, and they were directed to this guy named Andrew and his brother named Peter. Come, follow me and I will send you out to fish for people. That come follow me implies forsake everything else and come follow me because you can't hold on to these things and follow me both. You've got to throw them away and follow me. Fix your eyes on Jesus, the author of Hebrews said, and I will make you a fisher of men. You won't do it. I will do it. Because the more that you feed on me, the more you grow in grace and knowledge and truth of Jesus, the more that it will be your desire that even your enemies come to salvation. Jesus went through Galilee teachings in their synagogues proclaiming the good news of the kingdom. That's verse 23. And healing every disease and sickness among the people. News about Him spread all over Syria and people brought to Him all who were ill with various diseases, those suffering uh, severe pain, the demon possessed, those having seizures and paralyzed, and He healed them. Large crowds from Galilee, the Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and the region across the Jordan followed Him. Now, this is verse 1 of chapter 4 as we continue to read. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, He went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to Him and He began to teach them. Not preach them to them, not say to them, but teach them the way of the kingdom 
of heaven. His way, God's way, your way if in fact you believe. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed. I told you a lot of definitions say that that's happy. But happiness is a result of the blessing. You are blessed. Who's blessed? You are blessed. If you believe in Jesus Christ, why are you blessed? Because God has said you are in right standing with Him. You will not die eternally for your sins. They have been pardoned, ransomed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Not only that, but you're God's child. You're equipped with the God living through you the, and the Holy Spirit changing you. You are God's temple. You are building blocks. You are building this kingdom here on earth. So as you grow in the grace and knowledge, the world disappears and you want equality. You want justice. You want to live a life that brings glory and honor to God. You can't help but thank Him and worship Him. And we'll talk a little bit more about these beatitudes, as they call them, in just a minute. It's the condition that you are in, the, st the state that you're in now, because of not who you are, but because of what God has done for you, all because you believed in Jesus Christ. You are blessed. So, to give you a little more thought process on what a beatitude is, I'm going to go to the Hebrew over the Greek, go to the Old Testament. Psalms 1 starts out this way, the psalm book of the Israelites, of the people of Abraham, the ones that should have the faith of Abraham. They sang these songs. If they had any scripture, so to speak, it would be these psalms. That's why we're reading the psalms. Psalms 1, verse 1, Blessed is the one who does not walk in the step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers. They set themselves out differently. Verse 2, but those who delight in the law of the Lord and who meditate on His law day and night, not just eat it for five minutes, but meditate on it day and night. What happens with that person? Verse 3, that person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaves do not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Wow, sounds like Jesus' words right there, written... <laughs> How many years before? And then Psalms two, chapter two, or Psalm 2 tells us more about the story by asking the why. Why do people reject Jesus? Verse 10, Therefore you kings be wise, be warned, just like Peter did, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and celebrate His rule with tr trembling. Kiss His Son or He will be angry and your way will lead you to destruction. These were written way before Jesus. For His wrath can flare up any, in any moment. And the Psalms 2 ends this way. Blessed are all who take refuge in Him. Do you want Jesus' blessing? Do you want God's blessing? Do you have God's blessing? Then if you're blessed, then your life should surely show it. Let me remind you again what Peter said, last words to the churches. Therefore, dear friends, since you have been forewarned, be on your guard so that you may not be carried away by the error of lawlessness and fall from your secure position. But instead, grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be glory both now and forever. Amen. The things in this world don't seem quite as important if you fix your eyes on Jesus. The kingdom things in this world become more important. So what was a beatitude? A condition, a blessing given to you by God, and there's a result. Blessed are the poor in spirit for, prepositional phrase, preposition, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Because you have been blessed, you are a child of the kingdom of heaven. You are God's child. Remind you in Ephesians what Paul wrote. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sin, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. So what spirit is at work in you? All of us who lived among them at one time gratified the cravings of our flesh, following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. Verse 4 of Ephesians 2, But because of His great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. 
even when we were dead in our transgressions. For it is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with Him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. And that's now. That's a present tense that's there. We reigning with Christ now. We just haven't seen that physically with our eyes yet. Our faith hasn't become sight. Your citizenship is in heaven. You are ambassadors here. You are exiles here. You are foreigners, sojourners. That one's tough for me. Verse 7, In order that in the coming ages He might show His incomparable riches of grace expressed in His kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. It is that not of yourselves it is a gift of God, not of works, so that we cannot boast. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. Now let's compare those to what Peter wrote. Those were what Paul wrote to the church in Ephesus. Peter wrote these words, Ephesus being one of those, in chapter 4 of 1 Peter. Therefore, since Christ suffered in His body, arm yourself with the same attitude. Repent. Change your way of thinking. Because whoever suffers in the body is done with sin. As a result, they do not live the rest of their earthly lives for human desires. But... They live their lives for the will of God. For you have spent enough time in the past doing what the pagans do, living in debauchery, lust, drunkenness, orgies, carousing, and detestable idolatry. Oh, I don't do all this. Wait a minute. Idolatry caught me, didn't it? <laughs> Other things probably caught you too, if you want to be honest, some of them. Verse 4, they are surprised that you do not join them in their reckless, wild living, and they heap abuse on you. See, part of the problem is, is we think we're pretty good people. That has nothing to do with what a blessing is. Blessing is because the one who gives it, gives it to you despite who you are. And if we want to be honest with us, we know we're all sinners. We all know we all deserve God's wrath. But because we live differently, verse 4, they are surprised that you don't join them. Verse 5, but they will have to give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. Verse 7, the end of all things is near. Therefore be alert and of sober mind so that you may pray. And above all, Love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. There's one reason why we love. That's why we don't keep records of wrong. That's why we think of others over ourselves. Because the end result is they see your love. And that shows them the love of God. While even as a sinner, Christ died for the ungodly. goes on to say in verse 10... Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace. How can you go and grow in God's grace if you're not using grace to give grace to others, if you're not gracious? If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very word of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength that God provides. It's all about God. So that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To Him be glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Verse 12, Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal. See, the Holy Spirit revealed that to Peter in the first letter, that that's what was going to happen to the church. And that fiery ordeal came. Those Christians were literally burned as street lamps. But they continued to profess, the church continued to grow, the name of Jesus Christ was spread across the known world. Peter goes on to say that it's a good thing to suffer for being a Christian. And then he goes on to say, verse 17, For it is time for judgment to begin, not when the day of the Lord comes, but now, with God's household, those that have been blessed. And it begins with us. What will the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if it is hard for the righteous to be saved, remember him saying, who can be saved then? When he said that Jesus was the Messiah and had the words of life? That was when, in John chapter 6 when everybody else ab abandoned him. What will become of the ungodly and the sinner? So then those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to their faithful creator and continue to do good. So Jesus' first sermons, crowds have gathered together, crowds following Jesus, saying, I want to know what He says. But let's be honest. I don't really want to do what He says. 
What's changed? Oh, I know there's plenty of people who go to church and everything else that profess with their mouth. But if you believe in your heart, then you've been blessed. You are God's temple. The Holy Spirit lives in you. The Holy Spirit will be living through you as you feed off the Holy Spirit. Are you doing that? So when you read these blessings, there's no way that you can take them in a prosperity gospel thing. Say, I'll be blessed if you are blessed already because you're saved. And look at how they start off. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. There's eight here, depending on how you read them. And the reason that there's eight, because you might think one afterwards is, is because they start with you belong to the kingdom of heaven and end with you belong to the kingdom of heaven. In verse 10, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted. Here we go, because that's what Peter was talking about and everything. Because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Do you belong to the kingdom of heaven? If you do, you've been blessed, and as you are transformed by the Holy Spirit, as you read and study God's Word, as you pray and fast and other things that you do to be in a right relationship with God, as you thank Him and worship Him, however you choose to do that, you will live like a child that is blessed. This is how the kingdom children live. Jesus is talking about the kingdom to the crowds, but the problem is, is very few will enter. There will be many on that day that cry out, Lord, Lord, and He'll say, depart from Him, I don't know you. So the thing is, are you blessed? Do you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Let me read it this way. You're destitute. The wages of your sin is death. Your spirit is because you're a spiritual being as far as well as a, a physical being, tells you there's no way you can get to heaven. You're going to spend an party, eternity apart from God. But who is God? Well, creation screams His name, screams that He loves you, even in this fallen world. And you realize that you are created being, created for a purpose. You weren't created for nothing, especially not to cre created to live your life for your own desires. And Scripture's clear about that. When you realize that you're destitute, that you're bankrupt, there's no way you can pay this sin debt to God. Then you've come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ because God offered His one and only Son that whosoever believes in Him will not perish but have eternal life. Yours is the kingdom of heaven. And if that's the case, you will mourn because of this sinful world. Because it'll break your heart that some of your loved ones will die and go to hell. That not everyone will be saved. So you'll live your life for them. You'll teach them. You'll study God's Word. And you will be comforted. You're given the Holy Spirit as the comforter so that, as 2 Corinthians says, that you can be a comfort to others. You will be meek, not weak, meek. You'll be kind and considerate for others, but with the power of God and His armor at your disposal. The words that you never knew to say, the way that you could never live that life before, God lives through you. You will inherit the earth. As a result, you will hunger and thirst for righteousness. As Jesus hungered and thirsted in the, in the desert and said, Satan, I don't worry about bread. Man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I will study His word. I will make it a light unto my feet and a lamp unto my path. That is why I must be merciful. Not because it's deserved, but because it's undeserved. Because I as a sinner didn't deserve God's grace, but He gave it to me just the same. I will be shown mercy. I will stay pure in heart because God, God will guide me. I have a new heart. His words are written on my heart. The things that the Old Testament saints longed for, and yet they still lived a life that they gave up this world and lived for God, and it was counted as righteousness for them. Because I have this new heart, I will see God. It will make me live as a peacemaker. 
yet knowing that God is judge and jury, that I just need to live my life peacefully among those so that they may see my good works and glorify my Father which is in heaven. Who knows, they may even call me a child of God. Living this way, the way of the cross, the way of Jesus, the way of His church, the way of Christians, I will be persecuted for my righteous living. But that's okay, because I belong to the kingdom of God. That's my interpretation of those eight Beatitudes. But Jesus keeps on saying to that crowd that day, Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you falsely, and say all kinds of evil against you because of me. How many times do we say, well, that's not fair? Rejoice and be glad that happiness is a result of the blessing that you have. Despite any persecuting, name-calling, beating, anything else, <laughs> I am blessed. Not that I'm better than, but I am blessed, and I can't help but live this way, and hopefully you will see that. Rejoice and be glad. Why? Because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecute the prophets who were before you, you are the salt of the earth, but the salt loses its saltiness. How can it be made salty again? Don't fall from that secure position. It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. Your seasoning and preservative for the world do it. You are also the light of the world, verse 14. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. John, it was exactly God's time for you to say the words that you did. It was exactly God's time that all the children were here to sing this little light of mine. Let them speak to you Jesus' words. Let your light shine before men that they see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. You are blessed. Do you understand that? Father in heaven, we thank you for the blessing that comes from faith in Jesus Christ and Him alone. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but exactly the opposite of that. Oh Lord, help us to see your way, to see your truth, to know that we are your children, that your spirit indwells us, that we are your temple, Lord, that we fight a spiritual battle that Satan is trying to tempt and to destroy us. He's trying to devour us, as, as Scripture says, Lord. But we have your armor, we have your power, we have your might. We've been given a commission by Jesus Christ to live as a light to this world, not to worry about this world, not to worry about what we're going to eat or drink. Give us our daily bread, Lord. Help us to keep our eyes focused on Jesus. Help us to think of others more than ourselves. Help us to be a good steward of all the things that you have given us. You have blessed us so, so much. Lord, we thank you that we have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. May we live out this great salvation in holy fear. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus, the life that is true, striving.